Good morning and welcome. I'm glad that you're with us today because today is a very special day. I am preaching about a wedding. Not just any wedding, but the wedding between Jesus and his church and the marriage supper of the Lamb. Do you know I've been asked to hold dates for up to two years in advance for people to have a wedding. I want you to know that God has been holding a date for thousands of years for the day that Jesus will come for his bride for the day that we will celebrate with our Lord the marriage supper of the Lamb. God bless you for joining with us today. Let me lead us in a word of prayer. Father, I thank you so much for this wonderful day in which we can gather over the internet, Father, and also gather here in the house of God and celebrate the marriage supper of the Lamb, the coming time when there will be a shout from heaven, and the church will be gathered up to be with the Lord forever. Father, I pray today that if there's someone that's watching that does not know for certain that they have eternal life and that they will go to heaven and be part of that great event, Father, I pray that this hour they would give their heart and life to you. Now we pray all of these things in the wonderful, powerful, beautiful name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven, heaven. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat. Well, today we will be wrapping up in the year 2020 this series called The Coming Storm. You know, when we began preaching this series on The Coming Storm, we were not sharing these on the internet. We didn't have a drive-in service. In fact, we had not even given any thought to COVID-19 but yet God laid upon my heart to preach a series about a coming storm. Friend, I'm going to tell you, when we come back to the book of Revelation in the year 2021, I believe that the storm is here. When we began preaching out of the book of Revelation last year, I had no idea that we would see a day and an age when we were told what to think, what to wear, whether or not we could attend church, or whether or not in some states people could even have relatives come over for the holidays. And the idea that there are those who would say that they can cancel Christmas. Yes, there is a storm. But today, we're looking at what I am calling a marriage made in heaven. You see... The storm is here on earth, but as we look at this passage from the book of Revelation chapter 19, we are looking at a wonderful celebration in heaven. Join me as I read these verses, a marriage made in heaven, Revelation 19, verses 1 through 10. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor 
and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Now look up here. I want us to talk about verse 2 for just a second. Because this harlot, remember when we preached on the harlot? The harlot that is mentioned in verse 2 is a nation. It is a nation that has gone out of its way to promote perversion and even export sexual perversion around the world. Not only did this nation, this great harlot do that, but they were actively involved in killing believers around the world. Did you notice what verse 2 said? That now God hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Well, let's continue in verse 3. And again they said, Alleluia! And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude And as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou, do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for this strong word that teaches us so many different things. But today I pray that we would celebrate because we know that we will overcome this evil world of sin, perversion, and violence. Father, we know that there are evil people, even today, that would terrorize believers, that would kill Christians, that would sponsor the killing of Christians around the world. But Father, in spite of persecution... We know that believers are the overcomers, that we are the victors. Father, I pray today if there's someone watching that is lost, that will be the losers in eternity. Father, I pray that instead of continuing in that direction, that today would be a day of change, and that if there's someone watching today that needs to receive Christ, Father, I pray that today would be their day of salvation. In fact, that in this hour, they would commit their life and heart to you. Now be with us. Help us as the church to be your bride, wrapped in righteousness. Forgive us of our sins. Help us to live for you. And I pray this in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we all know that weddings can be spectacular. Listen, people will spend money on a wedding like they don't spend on anything else. Thousands of dollars are easily spent to capture a moment in time that a couple might enter into marital bliss. 
Typically, the church is decorated to the hilt. The bride is in a beautiful wedding dress, and the groom stands handsomely at the front of the church. This special moment in the lives of a husband and a wife is set aside for one thing, a marriage made in heaven. But what happens after the wedding? All too often, the marriage doesn't seem to be made in heaven. In fact, oftentimes, arguing, division, and even divorce occurs in our world today. But not true for God and His people. You see, friend, listen to me. God loves you, and He wants to be joined to you through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, secured and filled by the Holy Spirit of God that enters into you. Jesus said that as many as receive him, to them gave he the right, the authority, to be called the children of God. Yes, the marriage of the Lamb with the church, his bride, is truly a marriage made in heaven. Finally, we have arrived at an exciting portion in the book of Revelation, the marriage of the Lamb. Let's look closely and quickly. First of all, we see the exaltation of the Savior in verses 1 through 6. The hallelujah of God's salvation for the believers. Listen, heaven is praising the Lord for all that He has done. You see, this is a wedding that is a great celebration. In heaven, we see the marriage between Jesus as a catalyst for heaven to break out in all kinds of song and music that is a celebration. And while earth is weeping over the modern Babylon that has been destroyed, those in heaven will be singing hallelujah because salvation was given to those who would receive Jesus Christ. Believers are saved, and our text says that in heaven we will be singing one day, and we'll have a reason to shout hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. That's what verse 1 had to say. Believers are able to praise God because He loved us with an everlasting love, according to the prophet Jeremiah. Believers are able to praise God because Jesus came into the world that first Christmas. We can praise God because Jesus never sinned. In spite of temptation, He never gave in to sin, yet He was 100% man and also 100% God, and he lived a perfect life for you and for me and for every person that comes into this world. And so believers are able to praise. We are able to praise because Jesus willingly went to a rough, rugged cross, and there he poured out his rich royal blood to pay the penalty for our sin, He was buried and that he rose again the third day and that he ascended into heaven. And yes, we can praise God because he came back for his children at the rapture. And now we see that there is a marriage supper of the Lamb. Much of these things are still in the future. You see, in the future, there's going to be a shout from heaven. There's going to be the voice of the archangel and the dead in Christ will rise and those of us that are alive will be joined with them in the air and forever we will be with our Savior in heaven. That's still to come, the rapture. And still to come is this marriage supper of the Lamb. This wedding between Jesus and the bride, His church. The hallelujah of God's sentence upon this world is also something that God's people will be singing and praising God for. You see, the residents of heaven 
Praise the Lord because he is going to execute judgment upon this lost, sinful, and hateful world. And they know that God's judgments are fair. They are right and they are perfect. Let's look again at what our text said. God has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication. And he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. And again they said, Hallelujah! You see, the godless government that had deceived the lost with great deception and murdered the saved and instituted the mark of the beast, it has been destroyed. You know, it may seem strange that heaven is rejoicing over the judgment of God coming upon this world. But I want to remind you that a sinful world had every opportunity to repent from sin and receive the Lord. But they had rejected the Bible. They had rejected the teaching of God's word to their children. And so in the book of Revelation, we see how hate-filled people would embrace the Antichrist. They would bow to his image, that they would be engaged in all kinds of sexual perversion. But in the midst of all of that, salvation was still offered, and believers would receive Jesus. And therefore, they praise the name of the Lord for his judgment upon this world is right. Lest we forget, we are serving a God who has already won the war against the devil, against this sinful, hate-filled world, and he's overcome evil. Thank God that believers come out on top of things. And then we see the hallelujah for God's supremacy over his creation. Jesus is exalted and worshiped because of his creation. Let me remind you of something I said last week. Jesus is the creation force according to the word of God. All things according to John chapter 1 verse 3. How many things? All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. And again, Colossians 1.16, For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. You know, I look forward to being in that number when we stand around the throne and lift our hallelujahs to the glory of God. You know, I like that song when the saints go marching in. Yes, I do want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Well, second, let's look at the excitement of the supper. We see that in verses 7 through 10. Now we see the excitement of the completed plan of salvation. The words, is come, imply a sense of relief about a long-anticipated event. Have you ever waited impatiently, or maybe patiently, for a big event? It could have been graduation from high school. It could have been graduation from a secondary school could have been the day you got married or the day you retired. You know, there are many big days, but I'm going to tell you, no matter how many big days you as a believer have experienced, there's one that's even greater that's coming. And it is this day, the marriage supper of the Lamb. This is a moment that God has been planning since the foundation of the world. The accomplishment of Jesus 
when he died on a rough, rugged cross to pay for our sins, has now been totally fulfilled. The church is now gathered, and this is going to be the most spectacular moment in the history of all creation. Now notice that at this wedding, the groom and not the bride is the center of attention. That's not the way it is in most weddings here on this earth. It's, it's the bride that is the center of attention. The groom and the minister will walk into the church and everybody remains seated. <laughs> and then there's this long procession of, of bridesmaids and, and a child carrying a pillow with rings and a flower girl that's dropping petals. But then comes that moment when the bride is going to come in and everyone stands at attention. You see, in an earthly wedding, it's the bride that is really the focus of the attention. But here, at the marriage of the Lamb, it is the groom, the Lord Jesus Christ, that is the focus of attention. Now we see the excitement of a completed presentation of salvation. Heaven is singing because this is the marriage of the Lamb. This is Jesus Christ with His people, believers who have received Him by faith into their heart. The Lamb, the groom, is Jesus Christ, and the wife or the bride is the true believers that have received the Lord into their hearts. And this is going to be a celebration like none other. In fact, John got so excited about all of this, he made a mistake and did the unthinkable. He, he, an angel was telling him all about this and explaining what was going to happen, and then John fell down on his knees before an angel. Did you notice that in verse 10? He said, I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do... It not, I am thy fellow servant. <laughs> Angels are messengers of God. They are created beings, just like we are. And they don't take the place of the Lord. You know, it does concern me a little bit when I see people with angel pictures and angel pens and, and uh, other things that might venerate angels. Now, angels are wonderful beings. I'm not saying if you have an angel pen not to wear it, but don't worship it. I'm not saying not to have a picture of an angel somewhere in your home, but don't worship it. Just be aware that they are created beings just as we are, and together, all of the created things that God has created, together we are to worship Him. That's why the angel said, I am thy fellow servant. That's why the angel said, worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. For you see, now, at the marriage supper, all of prophecy is being fulfilled. Babylon the harlot has been destroyed. This modern mystery Babylon has been destroyed, for God's kingdom has come. And for these reasons, Jesus and Jesus alone is worthy of our praise, of our worship, of the giving of our lives, our time, our talents, our treasure, and our testimony. Only the Lord is worthy of worship. Well, one of the most familiar tunes in all the world is the Hallelujah Chorus from the Messiah. Once again, did you see some more of the words that are used in the Hallelujah Chorus in our passage today. 
in Handel's Messiah, Handel said, whether or not it was a vision or something else, I don't know. Listen, I, I wonder myself. The song was written in 1741, and it was first performed in 1742. And again, Handel says that while he was writing this, he had visions of heaven. That's not hard to believe. Because as I've been reading through the book of Revelation, as I've been preaching through the book of Revelations, I've had many dreams. God has spoken to my heart many times. I do know that whenever the Hallelujah Chorus from the Messiah is sung, people stand up. Why? Well, because when it was first performed, King George II from England was attending. And when this song was played, he realized that he was a mere mortal, just like everyone else. And when this song was played about the Lord Jesus Christ, King George was so moved that he stood to his feet. And when he stood, everyone else stood up as well. What will happen in heaven when these words that I have read from the scripture are sung? I think the Bible tells us that instead of standing, everyone will be kneeling. You may say, Pastor, where do you get that from? Well, let me share with you. I shared this verse last week. Philippians chapter 2 verse 10 says, At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I know this. If you don't bend your knee now and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it will be too late then. So let me ask you a question in closing. Do you know for certain that you have eternal life? And that if you were to die right now, that you would go to heaven. Do you know that for certain? Are you sure that you're saved? Are you certain that your sins have been forgiven? And do you know for sure that you will have eternal life in heaven? And that you will be part of this bride, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't give your heart to Jesus, one day the Bible says that those who are lost, that rejected the Lord here, will kneel at the great white throne of judgment before being cast into an eternal death, an awful place called hell. Hell was created for the devil and the demons that rebelled against him. But Jesus came so that all people everywhere, of every face and race, every language and tongue, can be saved, forgiven of sin, and receive eternal life. Listen to what the scripture says about your eternity and whether or not you have truly received Christ. 1 John chapter 5, verses 12 and 13 says, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. You see, the choice is yours. Will you choose Jesus Christ, or will you reject Him? Will you ask God to forgive you of your sins in the name of Jesus, because you believe with all your heart that Jesus died for your sin, and that He rose from the grave victorious, and that He's coming again, for those who believe in Him, 
and receive them unto himself. That where he is, there you can be also. Do you know for certain that you will be part of the Lamb's wedding supper? Do you know that? If not, I've got good news for you. Today you can receive Christ into your heart. Remember what I just said, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. I'm going to invite you right now, if you're not certain that you've asked Christ into your heart, that heaven is your home, I'm going to invite you to pray with me right now. I'm going to have a prayer up on the screen right now. Would you look at that? As I read that verse again, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. I'd love to lead you in that prayer. And you can ask Christ into your heart right now. God will hear the prayer of your heart. Would you pray and receive him right now? Pray after me. Dear God, I know that Jesus is your son. And I believe with all my heart that he died on the cross. And that he was raised from the dead victorious over sin and death. I know that I have sinned and that I need forgiveness. Please forgive me of my sin and come into my heart. I am willing to turn from my sin and I want to receive Jesus as my Savior and Lord, the ruler of my life right now. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now look up here. Did you pray that prayer and did you mean it? If you did, would you let me know? Would you publicly profess your commitment? You can do that by just calling me at 904-226-5547. Would you call me right now? Or you can email me. I've had people call. I've had people email Email me at Doug at UleBaptist.com. Let me know that you've made that commitment to the Lord. And as we come to the point of, of closing now, I'm looking forward to our Christmas series of sermons that are coming up now in December. I hope that you'll join us. And if for some reason you're not getting the emails that we send out about upcoming events, about our schedule, and with the link to these sermons, please call me or email me. Let me know that you'd like to be added to our mailing list. God bless you, and have a great day.